If you've got no idea how to hold a bottle of maple syrup, you're not alone. But why do these bottles have those tiny handles on them, and whose idea were they anyway? Picture this, it's Sunday morning and you're making pancakes. The aroma fills the kitchen. This is the moment you've been looking forward to all week long. It's just too bad, really, that you can't fit a single finger through the handle on your maple syrup bottle. You either have to clutch the bottle around its middle like some kind of Neanderthal, or grab the miniature handle with two fingers pincer style and hope you don't drop it. So what's with maple syrup bottles and those tiny sub-functional handles? Before plastic was the dominant packing material, it was glass, and before glass, it was stone in the late 1800s, Canadian households stored their liquid foodstuffs in heavy ceramic jugs with handles, making them easier to carry. The design choice made sense for carrying a jug containing up to 5 pounds of syrup, but becomes pretty useless when shrunk to a smaller scale and attached to a small, slender bottle. Some historians have suggested that the design element was included purely to invoke nostalgia, and it just ended up sticking around. Basically, when maple syrup companies began designing their products, the handles were added to all back to those beloved ceramic crocs and a pull on the heartstrings of Canadian consumers. Oh, Canada. <laughs> There's a name for this kind of thing, too. In biology, vestigial structures are parts of organisms that no longer serve a function. The tailbone, for instance, is thought to be a leftover remnant from some version of humans that used to have large prehensile tails. But after centuries of evolution, all it seems to be good for is getting broken after a fall. When it comes to physical objects and icons, this phenomenon is referred to as skeuomorphism, which is when we keep various design elements even when they're no longer required. It's the same reason why the recycle bin on laptops looks like a waste basket filled with crumpled up pieces of paper, or why smartphone cameras make the shutter sound when they take a photo. And you'll find a lot of this sort of nostalgia in current cooking trends. Vintage Pyrex and retro 1950s-style appliances are here to stay in contemporary kitchens. Supper clubs are enjoying a comeback, too. And as maple syrup bottles demonstrate, appeals to nostalgia were very much a thing even in the early 1900s. The tiny handle decorative element was actually something of an erroneous nod to the past, however. However, the large ceramic jars, after which the maple syrup jugs were modeled, typically held other liquid goods, like liquor and molasses. In reality, these jars were seldom used to hold maple syrup at all. Still, the point of the design was more about sentimentality, which tends to warrant a willing suspension of disbelief. The iconic tiny handle design actually comes from Brooks D. First of Sylvania, Ohio. He applied for a patent in June 1949 and secured it in February 1951. The first company to start selling selling maple syrup and first flask was Cary Maple Sugar Company of St. Johnsbury, Vermont in 1950. At the time, syrup came in 2-ounce, 8-ounce, and 24-ounce sized versions of the bottle. Sounds pretty cozy, right? But this seemingly innocuous little jug has its own murky origin story. Prior to his maple syrup bottle design, Brooks D. First was an experienced commercial artist working with the Owens, Illinois Glass Company and the Libby Glass Company in Toledo, Ohio, producing different shapes of glassware intended for food storage. Incidentally, the designer's older brother, Edwin First, was a commercial glassware designer too, and he might have invented the so-called first flask first. In 1933, Edwin locked down a patent for design for a jug, an oblong bottle with a wide, flat bottom for maximum stability, and a small, functionless handle attached to the neck. In the U.S., the Cary Company was peddling syrups in the 1933 first flask, while Quebec Maple Products sold the bottle design to customers in the Canadian market. Still, Edwin's patent expired 14 years later, so Brooks' 1951 invention was considered fair game. That said, the First Brothers might not have even been the first ones to come up with the tiny handle design. In 1922, Joseph Klein was awarded a patent for the syrup bottle design used by the Little Brown Jug Products Company, one that featured the useless little handle as well. Either way, as foodies today get to daydreaming about their favorite maple syrup recipes, that annoying little handle might start to look less like a nuisance and more like a reminiscent ode to the past.